you know, the quote that I wanted to cover today, it's actually not a hadith that can be attributed to the Prophet Wasallam. It's a narration that is mawquf, that stops at Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu or Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahimahullah in one narration. And it's found in Kitab al-Zuhd or Ibn Abi Dunya. It's a beautiful narration about a conversation between the angel of death and the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. And one of the things about the conversations or some of these narrations is that they tend to be narrations to grant us lessons, to help us reflect. And so as long as they're not outright fabrications, inshallah ta'ala, it's good for us to benefit from them. And so this is a narration that you find in the tafsirs when you have debates about the life of Nuh alayhi salam, how long he lived. And we know that Nuh alayhi salam was the prophet who lived the longest life. His da'wah alone, the call of Noah was 950 years. That doesn't include how many years he lived before he started his da'wah and it does not include how many years he lived after the flood. And so you'll find some of the narrations, you know, mentioning his lifespan, Ibn Abbas or Qatada, over 2,000 years or around 2,000 years that he lived on this earth, alayhi salam. So you can imagine a person who lived for 2,000 years, a person, one human being who lived that entire lifespan on earth. And this was certainly one of the miracles of Allah upon Nuh alayhi salam. And so when he's passing away, how many people has Nuh alayhi salam seen pass away? How much has unfolded before his eyes? How many generations of people have come and gone before the eyes of Nuh alayhi salam? And if you could imagine, that's a really, really, really long time. You know, we see people that live over a hundred years and we say, SubhanAllah, how long their lives were. Imagine a prophet who lived for 2,000 years. A man who lived for 2,000 years and who saw the world unfold in front of his eyes for 2,000 years. And the angel of death asks Nuh alayhi salam, Ya atwala nabiyyina umra, kayfa wajatta dunya waladataha. O prophet who lived the longest of all of the prophets, how did you find this world and all of its pleasures? Share a reflection on how you saw the world and all of its pleasures over the course of your 2000 something years. This is the angel of death who has taken the souls of everyone else. But this is the prophet that lived the longest. How would you describe as you're about to leave this world? You know, what your life has been like or how you experienced its pleasures. And he said that I found it kabaytin laha baban. I found it to be like a home that has two doors. I entered into the home and I stood in the middle of it for a brief moment. So I entered into this house. It has two doors, a small house with two doors. I entered into this house from one door. I stood in the middle for a brief moment and then I simply went out from the other door. So it's a very profound way to reflect on life. That for 2000 years, this is how I would summarize my life. It's like a small home. I entered into it from one door. I stood in the middle for a brief pause and then I walked out of the other door. And if you think about that, like if that is Nuh alayhi salam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the world would seem to us on the day of judgment, like one day or part of a day. And how we really reflect on the shortness of life, not in a way that depresses us or not in a way that says, well, you only have one life to live, so you might as well make the most of it. Not in that way. But there's something where Nuh alayhi salam alludes to in this statement that's attributed to him. Again, it's not a hadith, but this powerful narration that unless you really understand that just as you entered into this house and you cannot recount anything that came before it, but you certainly did not originate from nothing, your origins are not in this world. You did not originate here. Your body has originated here, but your soul did not originate here. You existed before this and your miraculous entry into this world from a place that you cannot see, from a realm that you cannot describe in any way whatsoever, then how are you going to fully appreciate that you are about to transition into another realm that you cannot see or describe except by what has been described to us through divine revelation? How are you to be able to describe that? Right? How can you really appreciate that you're about to go out of this door if you don't really understand that you came in through a door as well? And this is why when we talk about our birth, right? None of us can recount our birth. No one of us can remember being born. No one of us can remember the moments at the hospital. We know, we know that we were miraculously brought into this world because now as adults, we see other people take that miraculous journey, whether it's our own children or other people that originate from nothingness and become full human beings. So we see other people born into this world. And because we see other babies come into this world, we have a certainty of it, right? But 
other than that, we don't recount our own coming into this world. We don't remember what life was like in our mother's wombs, but we see other babies in their mother's wombs. We don't remember the moment of birth, but we see other babies born into this world. In the same way, death is such a mo'ida, it is such a reminder that it gives you certainty that you are burying people constantly. You're putting people in the grave and you know for certainty that you too will one day take this journey. You too will one day take this journey. It is a certainty. There is no dua that you could make, no prayer that you could make, nothing that you could do to escape that moment. But SubhanAllah, Allah gives us that, right? That we go to the graveyards and we put people into the graves and we see before our own two eyes constantly bodies that used to have souls that are now cast aside that are now put in the earth to be consumed by the earth and the soul will go on. And just like we cannot explain the miraculous entry of the soul, we cannot explain the miraculous exit of the soul, but we trust Allah and His Messenger وسلم, with that divine revelation to explain that to us. And so we have certainty. We have certainty in the miraculous entry from what we see and we have certain certainty in the exit from what we see. But what comes before that door that we entered into and that door that we exit out of, that is where our soul continues. That's where our soul continues. And that's where the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only thing that counts and the only thing that can carry us forward. So subhanAllah, I was just reflecting on that saying of Nuh alayhi salam because it was just so quick, right? You bury one person, move on to the next, bury the other person. And it's just like a hospital where babies are being brought in and then they're being put in the ward. If you've ever seen where all the babies are, you know, and people look at their babies and you point them out. And subhanAllah, just like that, people are burying and burying and burying. And just like they came in, they go out. And if Nuh alayhi salam, having seen the equivalent of 2000 years, says life was like a small house entering into one door and exiting out of the other door and it was just a brief pause in the middle of that house what does that mean for us and how much do we reflect on how we make the most of our true existence and our true purpose that is not confined to this house and not confined to this body that carries the soul so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us all on our loved ones may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for our shortcomings may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow that which awaits us in the hereafter to be better than that which is in this life may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enter into paradise without any form of questioning, without any form of punishment, without any hardship. May He allow our eternity to be a pleasing eternity, a beautiful eternity, and may He allow it to culminate in the presence of the prophets and the righteous and the martyrs in the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus around our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. 